Good morning all, it's Postbag, and these three all have question marks on the other side, so I've no idea what they are. Let's start with this one, it says LED module. Uh, it's probably quite old, so I genuinely have no idea what this is. Oh, that's one of those uh, breadboard power supplies. So this is um, a breadboard power supply unit. It looks like it's got two inputs. One is a 2.1 millimeter, the other is USB. It's got two regulators, um, a five volt and a 3.3. Let's have a closer look at those. Um, I get asked quite a lot about this uh, magnifying glass, surprisingly. Well, it's nothing special. It's DUAC, I've no idea what that means. Once daily gel. Uh, it's just one of these freebies that you get given um, when you go to an exhibition and it folds into a sort of a uh, thing with a fixed focal length but I just use it handheld like this to look at stuff close up right let's see if we can see those regulators yes the one on the left is 3.3 and the one on the right is 5 volts now there are two switches on each of these sort of long arms and I think the idea of the long arms is that um, it doesn't block any of the holes in the breadboard so it doesn't stop you using part of the breadboard. 3.3 uh, volts and 5 volts. I hope these switches are break before make otherwise you'd be connecting the output of one regulator directly to the output of the other. Now assume that uh, the zero, the black area here, is connected directly to ground on these uh, connectors and then the positive side um, goes to the middle of the switch and then you can select either 5 volts or 3.3 using these two switches. Uh, what else have we got? We've got some uh, header pins here, which presumably you can tap off. Uh, yes, you can. Ground, 3.3 volts, ground and five volts, I think that is. An LED, just because we love LEDs. A diode for reverse polarity protection. I don't know whether that's only on the uh, 2.1 millimeter socket. And also there's a 503 polyfuse. Now what's 503? That's 50,000 something. It's not going to be 50,000 milliamps because that would be 50 amps. Um, something funny about polyfuses, I think they're often marked a factor of 10 away from what they should actually be. I can't remember. Let's take a look. Right, so let's put this on a breadboard. Uh, so I'm going to put it, this is one of these um, nasty cheap breadboards where the holes were very difficult to get components in. So Oh, well, that's going in fine. Um, yeah, so the idea is you put that on the first few holes on the bus bars. Uh, now, they're the wrong way around, actually, because I've got the minus side on the red. So, actually, I should really have that that way around. Now, I've got positive to red, negative to blue. That looks better. Uh, now, that one won't go in properly. Oh, yeah, that's making a horrible crunching noise. I have to take a closer look at that. Right, yeah, that's gone in, and you can see that uh, because of the long arms, this offset, that you can still get to all the connections, obviously not these power connections, uh, but all the board connections right up to the end. Right, I'm going to make a couple of assumptions now, um, that this will be fine with 12 volts being plugged in here, actually 13.5, because we've got a nice amount of sunshine today. So let's plug that in. I'm assuming this is 2.1, not 2.5, and I'm also assuming that it's center positive. Quite a few assumptions there, but yeah, that's fine. The LED has lit up. Um, these regulators are the AMS 1117, I think they are, so they're rated for uh, certainly more than 12 volts on their input. Yeah, so a quick look at an AMS 1117 data sheet, and we can see an absolute maximum ratings. V in is has an absolute maximum of 18 volts so that should be fine on my solar system which only goes up to 14.4 right well i've been searching and searching and searching for polyfuses marked with a multiplier but i'm not sure this is a multiplier now um this page here which is an aliexpress page says they're 0.75 amps so perhaps the current is the first two digits and the number after that is something else possibly even the voltage because these are 24 volts uh, 4F. I think the ones I've got are 3Z. So I don't think the 3 or the 4 is a multiplier. No. So this one here that says uh, 503Z, I mean it's almost certainly half an amp. So I think uh, 
if you put the point before the 5, you've got 0.5 amps. But the 3Z, uh, that's still a mystery. So this item is upgraded K2 MB102. That's the breadboard style that I was looking at. A breadboard power supply module, 3.3 volts, 5 volts for solderless Arduino. Uh, this one is $1.66, free shipping. And this one came from Sheng Longzi. Right, the sun's starting to encroach on my desk, so uh, I mustn't spend another half an hour looking at data sheets. Right, this one is accessories, $5, but uh, no way of me working out what this one is. Right, this is another uh, split rail power supply. Uh, we can see in there and ground, and out minus ground and out plus. Um, I suppose I should take it out of its bag, really. Uh, yeah, clearly this is a fixed voltage because there are no pots on here. It's also clearly switch mode because we've got two inductors there, 68 micro henrys, uh, two chips there. We'll have a look at the numbers in a minute. Uh, now, interestingly, we've got one 16 volt capacitor and two 25 volt capacitors. So is the 16 on the input, which is on this side, and the 25 is on the output? Possibly it might just be a strange layout. Um, let's take a look at those ICs. Right, those appear to be the same. Uh, they're marked 063AC or possibly 0B3AC. So I might take a look at that one. Uh, you can see the one on the right there has pins. Oh, what would it be? Oh, I can't even see the index marker. Uh, so I can't even really tell which is pin one. I'll assume it's bottom left for the moment, but you can see uh, the one on the right has pins, well, seven and eight, if that's what they are, linked together, and the one on the left doesn't. Uh, so maybe that's how they're being used differently for the positive and the negative rails, but I really need to look that one up. Right, this appears to be an MC34063A, uh, 1.5 amp step up or step down or inverting switching regulator. So that's how they're doing the inverting for the minus voltage output. Right, so this says uh, 3 volts to 40 volts on the input. Uh, is this boost or buck? Yes, it is boost or buck, isn't it? Uh, 1.5 amps maximum output, uh, frequency operation to 100 kilohertz. That seems quite low. Let's take a look at the uh, eBay listing for this. Right, okay, here's my purchase history. Uh, it's clearly this device here with the, with the three capacitors. Uh, negative voltage dual DC 12 volts to 12 volts power supply module. Uh, 5 to 12 volts input to plus and minus 12 volts uh, fixed voltage for four amplifier or four circuitry that uses op amps. Uh, I bought it from Wu 81 for HY, and I've got a feeling they used to be called Ian who 81 I think that was what it was, they've changed their name. But you can see here that this is just black text, not a link. So they're no longer selling this item. However, I have found someone who is selling it. Uh, so here's clearly the same item, negative voltage dual, 12 volt DC to 12 volt power supply module, 5 to 12 input to plus or minus 12 volt for amplifier. Uh, this one's being sold by LE888 Fun. Uh, free shipping, $5.88. Now, in the specs, it says that uh, the output current has is a maximum of 100 milliamps, which seems very low, considering Datasheet was saying 1.5 amps, so that's a bit odd. And uh, here under application, it's saying this module can be used as a low-power uh, ADC DAC or amplifier or other power supply not be used as a load power supply. So I think what they're saying is don't draw heavy current from it. And I wonder if that's something to do with using the chip in inverting mode, that it's not rated as highly as if you're using it just in buck or boost mode. I don't know. And uh, here's another one. And this one feels suspiciously like it came from my night of buying fishing tackle boxes. Uh, but let's find out if it is a fishing tackle box. Yes, yeah, so I think it's some sort of fishing tackle boxes. Mm, I wonder how many compartments. Uh, right, six compartments in this one of varying sizes and orientations. So I think we've already come to the conclusion that these things aren't very cost-effective to buy 
on eBay because they're normally a couple of dollars for something which you can probably get in your local pound shop or dollar store. But uh, yeah, that one's quite interesting. I've got a funny feeling I've shown the same one before, but I can't remember. Right, so once again, here's my purchase history. Uh, the night of buying fishing tackle boxes where I went a bit mad, February the 6th, some time ago now. Um, yes, this one, it's this one here with the six compartments. Uh, this one is add to your cart, but I have noticed that further up in amongst all the other fishing tackle boxes is this one, uh, which was purchased from Li Hu Yu Mi Chenga, and that name rings a bell. So I think I might have shown this one before. Oh well, never mind. Uh, but this is what I mean when I say that things are no longer in my purchase history. I mean, they are in my purchase history. Here they are. But they're no longer a clickable link because that item is no longer for sale. Now, you might find that if you go to this seller, you can find the same item uh, relisted with a very similar name. But this particular listing has gone out of date. They are quite handy, these things, though. So uh, maybe it's worth paying a little bit uh, over the odds. Uh, this one I'm going to make switches for the breadboard computer. Right, let's do one more. Um, this one, I do know what it is. It came in this morning. It's quite intriguing. I want to know whether this is going to work. Oops. And it is a tie clip. Um, yeah, this is a an all-metal tie clip in this rather interesting sort of terracotta colour. Um, spring loaded, there's a little spring there. Now what's that got to do with electronics? Well, I wanted this for a particular um, issue that I was having. Let me show you. Um, right, I'm not even sure this is going to work yet, but um, let's give it a try. When I'm soldering dual inline sockets into these prototyping boards, it's very difficult to get the socket and the chip and all that stuff properly held down hard onto the board while I solder it. Now, often for this sort of thing, I'll use blue tack, but it doesn't really apply the sort of force I wanted um, to hold that absolutely flat and even to ensure that these turned pins are sort of centralized in these holes. So I wanted something with a fair old uh, bit of strength to hold that down, but not that would get in the way of me soldering these. So I thought, well, maybe if I use this clip, oh, it's not going to work if the uh, chip's not near the edge of the board. Well, let's assume that it is near the edge of the board for the purposes of this. Uh, now, how does that want to do this? I think I wanted to put that over the chip and have the jaw come in from the bottom. Yes, it's not brilliantly uh, going to work, is it? What I didn't really reckon on is the height of this. Actually, if I did this without the chip in it, let's try that. Yes, it doesn't really work terribly well that way round because there's not enough clearance. Maybe a bit of bending of that arm, but that's not sitting flat at all. Uh, actually, maybe if I went across like that, but then the jaw would have to sit between these pins. So you'd have to do it one way round while you soldered one set of pins. Yeah, it's kind of halfway there. It's not really right though, is it? Right, I've kind of bent it all a bit. Um, I've bent that arm a bit straighter and that does look better. I've even bent the uh, teeth in slightly so that they fit uh, a 0.1 inch pitch. So the first two teeth are actually sat down in the holes on this board. And yeah, that bar does kind of hold the uh, IC socket flat against the board for soldering. So yeah, maybe that will come in handy after all. And uh, so this item is Boy Trendy Men Gentlemen Candy Color Gift Bar Simple Tie Clasp Neck Tie Clip. Uh, I went for orange, even though it's actually more of a terracotta, I would say. Uh, $1.09, free shipping, and this came from HK.1644. And so these are today's postbag items. Now, big thanks uh, once again, as usual, to Patreon supporters who make postbag, um, well, as exciting and as frequent as it is. So um, here's the link through to Patreon if you'd like to become 
a supporter. A couple more videos up here if you'd like to watch more of my stuff. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, click my face here. Cheerio.